6 o'clock, we're going to start the webinar. And uh, basically, right now, things have not changed much with the 5 uh, p.m. advisory. Uh, maybe, maybe the uh, center might be a tad bit further offshore, but it's really uh, nothing at this point that, that's worth really talking about significantly changing things. So as things continue right now, as long as things stay on the NHC forecast track, this is an intensity. This is a worst case storm surge scenario for our coastal areas. Catastrophic damage is anticipated for coastal areas, especially coastal areas in, in the southern part of our area, um, St. Augustine southward, and then maybe again near St. Simon's Island because there's just so much more of a storm surge threat up in that area. Uh, the storm is still forecasted by the Hurricane Center to move dangerously close to our area on uh, Friday through Friday night and then into Saturday with catastrophic impacts expected near and along the coast. Now remember, a major hurricane has not occurred here in 118 years, so it will be unlike any hurricane in the modern era if we do take a direct impact. The western eye walls forecast to move along portions of the coast with sustained winds of 115 to 125 miles per hour and gusts to 140 miles per hour in Flagler and St. John's County coastal areas kind of extreme southeast portion of St. John's County. Winds will be high along the rest of the coastal areas. We'll talk about that, but that's probably the peak intensity down in those areas if things stay as forecasted. Winds could be higher in high-rise structures, such as in downtown Jacksonville, possibly uh, to strong Category 4 intensity, even in the downtown area, despite the fact that they're 14 miles from the coast. Some of the lowest barrier islands will be completely overtopped with large battering waves, life-threatening flooding, and uh, they're likely to be breached. Extremely possible we could see new inlets on Sunday, uh, on Saturday afternoon. So uh, basically, this is going to be a much larger storm surge than generated by Sandy along the New Jersey shore, and we saw all the damage and cut inlets that occurred there. The uh, NHC five-day cone of uncertainty and uh, forecast track, and you can see it performing some type of a loop off of our coast. And this is uh, an October thing. We do tend to see these loops occur in October, and uh, if you go back in history, there are probably about five or six examples of this type of thing occurring. But the key aspect of it is look at close, uh, closest point of approach to the entire uh, northeast Florida and southeast Georgia coastline. So there's our tropical storm uh, force wind speed probabilities, and they are increasing. Out in the western part of our area, we decided to uh, hold off one more time for a uh, possible tropical storm warning out in the uh, western part of our area, simply because we want to see if we see any eastward shift associated with the storm at all. We're, uh, we're kind of hoping and praying that something like that occurs, and uh, maybe it's wishful thinking, but we just wanted it to wait one more time to see if, if we can get that. Uh, unfortunately, the hurricane wind probabilities, as we mentioned in the last call and the call before that, are now significantly increasing on the coastline, and we've really got 60 to 70 percent chance of hurricane force winds along the coast for St. John's County and Flagler County. The uh, storm surge threat, the graphic that you see on the right hand or left hand side is actually an algorithm that generates that for us based on the storm surge in input and uh, astronomical tide and a couple of other things and gives us an idea of what the threat is. So this isn't a human produced product. This is a, a product that is a forecast model. And you can see the amount of extreme area along the coast that it came out with for uh, potential storm surge flooding, extreme being anything above about six feet or so. So basically, at six feet above ground level. So basically the storm surge warning area, you can see in the right hand slide, and it covers most of Wayne County, a substantial portion of uh, Camden County, except for the highest bluffs in the southern part of the county, and basically goes down the estuary. And you can see basically all the St. John's River, Doctors Inlet, uh, Black Creek, are all pretty much included in it now with the new storm surge information that we have. So the latest storm surge information was not available as of this graphic. I, I will try to update this before I put the PDF out in, uh, after this briefing and uh, get the latest from NHC, but I don't expect significant change with this because there isn't significant change with the forecast. So once again, you can see a large area of greater than nine feet of storm tide. For most of our coastal counties, we've exercised this this year. We've actually gone through this type of a scenario. 
associated with uh, a landfall in this area. And uh, basically, I did a comparison once again to the Category 4 moms, which I recolorized to be in the same NHC color scale. And this compares very, very favorably in all areas except for the Trout River with uh, what we see in the moms. So again, almost a worst case storm surge scenario if this were to come to pass. So uh, again, along the coastline. Uh, expected coastal impacts, life threatening storm surge greater than nine feet above ground level along the immediate coastline. Large breaking waves. You know, we're talking the weak points in the coastline. We're probably going to see at least scour, probably you know, breakthroughs. Now, y'all can read the rest of this, and it's what we've been talking about. It hasn't changed significantly. I want to emphasize on this that any track deviation or intensity changes could change these impacts greatly. One of the things we are seeing associated with this storm is it may be going through an eye wall replacement cycle. And eye wall replacement cycles are kind of uh, are kind of tricky things. Sometimes what happens with an eye wall replacement cycle is we increase the size of the wind field and that spreads out the winds. So they actually decrease in the inner core. But the bad thing about that is by spreading out the winds, we actually increase the area that's working on the ocean and potentially could increase the storm surge. So it's hard to see how it could get much worse right now, but that is one possibility that the wave action could even be greater if it's going through that type of eyewall replacement cycle. Conversely, if it is doing that, it also sometimes we do see track changes associated with that. So we're kind of watching for that, and maybe, again, maybe it's wishful thinking, but we're hoping we may be seeing something that may start to push this thing a little bit further to the east. I guess everybody can pray on that one. So you've, everybody has seen this graphic. I don't see any reason to go through this ad nauseum, but it does illustrate the wave run-up aspect and the uh, large breaking waves that we're talking about. What is really has changed in since the last graphic is our hurricane threats and impacts graphic. And now look at the area covered by extreme winds, potentially major hurricane force winds, all the way to Interstate 95 in coastal Georgia, and uh, really all the way to the west side in Jacksonville, and halfway through Clay and Putnam counties. So even the riverside areas of uh, Clay and Putnam County could potentially see extreme major hurricane wind if the storm were to deviate further to the west. Okay, now, let me emphasize something when I'm showing this graphic. We put this graphic up here to kind of help people with the timing. Uh, you know, I keep feeling a little bad that we feel like we're kind of ignoring our inland counties, but the threat is so great on the coast, we really have to put our emphasis on there. So for the coastal counties, please, don't look at these numbers and say, okay, these are the peak winds. Why are as Al saying, we're looking at this 115 to possibly 125 mile per hour wind in Palm Coast, and I see 67 and 103 in, in respect to pro, uh, product, uh, products. This is just a snapshot that we've taken at various times. So it's not necessarily a peak wind anywhere, but it should give people an idea for timing. So this is 11 a.m. on Friday, and you can see pretty much the entire southeastern section of our area of responsibility is involved in the tropical storm, in tropical storm force winds and hurricane force winds as the storm moves up along the coast. Then as we get into about 5 p.m., we've got the center somewhere to the east of Matanzas Inlet, St. Augustine Beach in that vicinity. And uh, at this period of time, you, we've already gotten past, uh, the, the peak winds have already gotten past Flagler County, and you, you can see 103 mile per hour winds there in the Palm Coast area with gusts 124. But again, let me emphasize, those are not the peaks. But you can see how far inland the tropical storm force winds go, you know, maybe right out to about Lake City. So again, this is why we're holding off on the western counties, wanting to wait just a little bit before we pull the trigger on putting some type of a tropical storm warning out there to see if we can avoid actually doing that. Now, as we start getting into uh, 11 p.m. on Friday, now the center is uh, to the east of uh, Amelia Island at that point, and uh, you can see the core of the uh, eye wall. It's still impinged along the immediate coastal areas, and uh, really tropical storm force winds somewhere about Homerville, maybe way across eastward about that period of time. And then as we get into uh, 5 a.m. on Friday, 
storm is starting to pull away from the coastline up in coastal Georgia, or excuse me, 5 a.m. on Saturday. Storm is starting to pull away from the coastline up in southeastern Georgia, and uh, tropical storm force winds at that period of time from about Jessup through Brantley County and then on into uh, Nassau County and Duval County with conditions beginning to improve in the Jacksonville metropolitan area during that period of time. One more time, those were not peak winds in any location. It's just that something we put in there for timing. Okay, and just to emphasize again the high rise aspect, uh, use caution if anybody's sheltering in tall structures. Hopefully nobody's going to try to ride this out in one of the tall structures along the immediate beaches. Windows will shed glass, especially if there's roofs around them that have a lot of rocks and pebbles on them. There is the danger of falling debris and glass from these buildings. And definitely uh, Duval County will need to be alert for shed glass on the downtown bridges approaches during their preliminary damage assessment. Still looking at similar conditions with rainfall. Um, didn't really update this graphic because we haven't seen any significant changes with it. So the heaviest rainfall along the immediate coastline, lesser rainfall as we go inland. Flood watch continues for the same counties and uh, really not much change with the talking points. So at this point, we'd be uh, happy to answer any questions for you. And we, we want to do that, Scott. you have anything to add? This is a, a one in 100 year type of event. It's unprecedented in our history. Uh, many generations of Northeast Floridians haven't experienced this type of thing, uh, including uh, millennials, Generation X, Generation Y, and baby boomers were young at, at the last time we had a major hurricane in the area. Also, we have a bunch of transplants, Northeasterners, uh, Midwesterners, uh, people from other parts of the country that never experienced it. So it's important for neighbors to help neighbors out and, uh, and hone in on the impacts. And I think uh, we've done a pretty good job doing it. And uh, also, uh, we are uh, continuing to spread the message as well. Uh, thank you all. And I just want to say before I open up the questions, listen, I am praying that this thing shifts further to the east. I would love nothing better than to uh, be absolutely wrong with these impacts and they have things really, really settle down and have uh, more mild impacts. But right now, based on all the guidance that we have from the National Hurricane Center, the guidance we're getting from some of our best models, the guidance we're getting from the slosh models, we have to prepare for a catastrophic impact along the entire coastal area and the St. Johns River counties. It's just what everything is telling us right now. There's still time. Pray it gets better, but, you know, that's uh, something to consider. 